morning, fellow travelers. Good morning. We welcome you to worship as we this morning come before the God who pulls us through the difficulties of life, pulls us through the problems and the, the trials and the tribulations, and offers us the presence and the power we need to overcome. Whether we're journeying through what feels like at the moment for us a fertile valley or a parched desert. We know, as Exodus 15 tells us, that the Lord is my strength. Would you rise up here in the sanctuary? Would you rise up at home in your heart as we praise God for being with us even in the midst of the desert?
today and uh, it's summertime so that means uh, for us it's time to learn some new songs and teach you guys some uh, some new songs so uh, we're gonna learn a great new song today by the wonderful worship artist Phil Wickham uh, called Great Things and it's really catchy and really upbeat it's it's easy to find slow pretty prayerful worship songs there's a billion of them <coughs> But sometimes it's tough to find upbeat, up-tempo, uh, joyous, modern praise and worship songs that work for us and that uh, we feel like are going to resonate in our church. And this is one of those. So um, let's do the chorus first. All right, we're going to teach you guys how this goes so you can jump right in and sing with us today. So uh, the chorus is the part that says, Oh, hero. And it's, Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. Let's try it together. Here we go. Ready and sing. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, Verse. 
verse, the beginning part sounds like this. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what a Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great great things. It's short the first time, it's short the second time, and it's long the third time. All right, drive with us, you guys. Come let us. Here we go. Come let us worship our King. This song is really, really simple. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Oh, 
you have done great things, we sang to God. You do great things, we sang to God. And God will do greater things in the days to come. For God seeks to pull us through the difficulties of life. For that reason, we speak to God in prayer each day as we go about our day, inviting him to do great things in us, for us, and through us. We gather together and we pray for one another in small groups so that we might indeed see God's great things happen in people's lives. And we gather together as the body of Christ on Sunday to be part of the great things God is doing. I invite you then in these moments to join me as we go before God in prayer that we might be one of the great things he is working on and he might work through us to bring about great things for others. Would you pray with me? Let us pray for the protection of our Heavenly Father from all of the evils that threaten us. Let us pray for the guidance of Jesus to make it through, to help us make it through the evils that threaten us. power of the Holy Spirit to conquer the evils that threaten us. Let's pray for the courage to make the hard choices that being a disciple of Jesus entails. Let's pray for those who are ill, those under medical treatment, for those having surgery to be healed. for those who are grieving to be comforted. Let us pray for those we know who need God's healing touch, God's guidance, for God's forgiveness. specifically pray this day for Art Golden. Let us pray for the children attending our Vacation Bible School program this week and their families. for the women of our nation and their health care providers. Almighty God, we live in a difficult and troubling world. 
There are all kinds of evils that come upon us, all kinds of problems which rise up before us. Help us indeed to always trust in the promise that you will pull us through and then to turn to you to see the fulfillment of that promise. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Indeed, the reason we can talk to God in prayer is we know he is waiting right here for us. Let us then stand up, let us rise up in our hearts if we're at home, and sing this song of prayer, waiting here for you.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 19. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this, is, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. May God add the reading and blessing of his holy name. Amen. When our boys were little, they loved trains. So we took them on short rail train lines all over Pennsylvania, Delaware, Virginia. Each one was restored from a real railroad line that no longer existed. And to create the nostalgic experience of what it was like to ride that real train in its heyday, reenactors would pose as ticket agents, engineers, and conductors. The reenactor jobs were real jobs. They just weren't the original real jobs with the real labor the original jobs entailed. The original real ticket agents engineers and conductors had hard jobs and those who held those real hard jobs truly labored every day to earn their paycheck for that reason railroad jobs have always been listed as one of the hardest jobs in the world but the absolute hardest job in the world is being a follower of christ that is because the job description of a Christ follower is impossible to fulfill, for it requires us to be a Christian. And according to what God reveals in Scripture, a Christian is someone who thinks like Christ. A Christian is someone who acts like Christ. A Christian is someone who responds to others like Christ which is not something we fallen and sinful creatures can do. We will always fall short of thinking, 
acting and responding to others as perfectly as Jesus. Fortunately, God has not left us behind at the station by calling us to do something we can't do. In his death on the cross, Jesus bought us a ticket to ride. And through the ticket to ride Jesus bought for us on the cross, we are given what we need to perform the hardest job in the world. And not just perform the job, but perform it with excellence. Perform it with passion. Perform it with joy. We see this in the passage from Acts. There we heard of a Christ follower named Ananias who was seeking to think, act, and respond to others like Jesus. And how one day Ananias was called to do those things in one of the hardest ways imaginable. Luke tells us a man named Saul headed towards Ananias' hometown of Damascus, breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciple. Which means he wasn't going to make a tourist visit. In fact, he was carrying letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. These letters were arrest warrants issued by the high priest in Jerusalem. And along with Saul, there were others with him, presumably temple police, who could help him arrest people and drag them back to Jerusalem for trial on heresy charges. Luke then shares how this affected Ananias. For Ananias, along with the other Christ followers in Damascus who were doing their very best to think, act, and respond to others like Jesus, was called by God to do his job as a Christ follower in one of the hardest ways possible. Luke tells us Jesus called him to go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. That was the last thing Ananias wanted to do. He knew why Saul had come to Damascus. So he said to Jesus, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. Luke tells us Jesus responded with sympathy and shared with Ananias the reason he wanted him to do such a hard job. This man is my chosen instrument proclaim my name to the Gentiles and to their kings and to the people of Israel. That must have caused Ananias to take a deep breath. It must have also caused him to remember that he made a commitment to be a Christ follower by thinking, acting, and responding to others like Jesus. And it must have caused him to then go do the hardest job in the world because Luke says he went to the house of Judas on Straight Street and entered it. And as commanded by Jesus, placed his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow night. This year's program is called Rocky Railway. And its subtitle is Jesus Pulls Us Through. Each night, the children will learn a different way Jesus pulls us through the difficulties of life, the way a, motolo the way a locomotive pulls cargo down the tracks. But getting on that train as a Christ follower and staying on that train as a Christian over the long journey of life is the hardest job in the world. That is because what Jesus wants to pull us through is everything that tempts us not to think like him. What Jesus wants to pull us through is everything that tempts us not to act like him. What Jesus wants to pull us through is everything that tempts us not to respond to others like him. To see how Jesus enabled us to be pulled through the difficulties of life to do the hardest job in the world, which is living as a Christian by thinking, acting, and responding to others like Jesus. We need to turn to that Acts passage, for it tells us exactly how Jesus pulls us through. 
It tells us, for instance, that Jesus seeks to pull us through by helping us think like him. We see this in the passage when Jesus tells Ananias that Saul is my chosen instrument to proclaim me to the Gentiles. When Ananias heard that, he probably began to recall some of the other things Jesus taught his disciples about how to help him bring about God's kingdom and God's will on earth as in heaven. For instance, he probably recalled that Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. And that reminded him that thinking like Jesus meant realizing that we are called to be God's redeeming presence in the world, even towards someone like Saul. And I probably recall that Jesus said we are to seek to be his saving presence, even if it requires us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. And that reminded him that thinking like Jesus meant that even in the face of persecution, we are called to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. For we never know what God will do through us when our mind is in perfect tune with his mind. And he probably recalled that Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And that reminded him that thinking like Jesus and having God's will be the primary thing we set our minds on. For this is not only how God saves us, it is how he saves others through us. Second, it tells us Jesus pulls us through by helping us act like him. We see this in the Acts passage when Jesus not only tells Ananias, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles, but also says, for I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. When Ananias heard that, he probably began to recall some of the other things Jesus taught his disciples about the behaviors those who follow him are to exhibit as they help him bring about God's kingdom and will on earth as in heaven. You probably recalled, for instance, that Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. And that reminded him that acting like Jesus meant that we are called to let the light of God's love so shine through us toward everyone that it even causes us to shine it toward someone like Saul. For it is only when those in darkness see the light of Jesus through us, that the darkness of their hearts and minds might be dispelled. Ananias probably recalled that Jesus said we are to shine his light, even when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you in my name. And that reminded him that acting like Jesus meant we might suffer because when we shine God's light into the evil around us, that evil sometimes pushes back to silence us. He probably recalled that Jesus not only said, you are the light of the world, but also said people do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand so that it lights up everyone in the house. And that reminded him that acting like Jesus by shining his light, even when we are suffering for doing so, has the potential to yet bring people into relationship with Christ that we would have never foreseen coming into the fold and also then becoming themselves willing to suffer for his name. Which is why Jesus told Ananias that I will show Saul how much he must suffer for my name. Finally, it tells us Jesus pulls us through by helping us respond to others like him. We see this in the passage when Jesus replied to Ananias, making excuses for not going to Saul immediately, by saying, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. 
For in that reply, Jesus told him a second time, go, this time almost shouting the command and then underscoring the importance of going by explaining why it was important. Saying, for this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles. Now when Ananias heard that, he probably began to recall some of the other things Jesus taught his disciples about the way his followers needed to respond to others as they sought to help him bring about his kingdom on earth as in heaven. He probably recalled that Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for tooth, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. And that reminded him that by responding to others like Jesus, it meant laying down his life and picking up his cross in all kinds of ways, including going to Saul. Ananias probably also recalled that Jesus said, if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you only greet your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that? Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And that reminded Ananias that responding to others like Jesus meant being perfect not only in what we seek to do, but also in how we respond to what other people seek to do. And he probably also recalled that Jesus said, not everyone who comes and says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father. And that reminded him that as a Christ follower, we are not only called to think like Jesus when we are the one proactively initiating a thought and intentionally act like Jesus when we are the one deciding to do something, but also must respond to others like Jesus when what someone else does impacts us negatively in some way. Even when that someone is a problematic person like Saul, a man who had come to Damascus breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. That is because when we make the commitment to live by the ways Jesus lived, which he calls us to do throughout the pages of the Gospels, vowing through grace by faith to think like Jesus, act like Jesus and respond to others like Jesus, we can actually perform the hardest job in the world. We can live like a Christian. And that means that we will not just perform the hardest job in the world, but perform it with excellence, perform it with passion, perform it with joy. For while living as a Christian is impossible in our fallen and sinful state, Jesus offers to pull us through the difficulties of life in such a way that we are able to be a Christ follower, a Christian. And through us living that kind of life, bring about his will on earth as in heaven, as others see him in us and want to walk with him as well. Amen and amen. Jesus in this very moment, is moving in our midst. Jesus, in this very moment, is seeking to touch our hearts. Jesus, in this very moment, is seeking to make the way for us to fully be a Christ follower, a Christian, and to pull us through everything that gets in the way of that. Let us say yes to Jesus and let him pull us through as we sing our closing song.
but might enable others to do the same. I invite you this week to do one of these things. I invite you to pray each day this coming week that the children attending our VBS program and their families would come to know God. Pray for our staff this week as they seek to introduce children to God. And if you're able to do so, contact Beth Rosick to let her know you will help as we still have all kinds of ways that we need people to pitch in. I invite you, if you've not already done so, to pick up from the narthex or down in the lobby during the week the book Life Song. It's about what it means to worship. Beginning July 10th, we're going to be looking at that topic not only on Sunday mornings, but Sunday nights in Zoom, and the Zoom link will be in our announcements. And I invite you, if you haven't partnered with Redbird this month, that there's still time before the end of the month to help them to keep their vehicles in repair for ministry, and then next month to partner with us as we partner with Pocono Plateau and all of the children that we have going to camp in July that you might indeed let Jesus pull you through in one of those ways. I invite you to receive now the benediction. May your heavenly Father protect you from all the evils that threaten you. May Jesus pull you through all the evils that threaten you. May the Holy Spirit empower you to conquer every evil that rises up before you. Amen and amen.